Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Low Efficiency of Switch Mode Converters with Extreme Duty Cycle and Intuitive Explanation. Now, it is very well known that the efficiency of switch mode converters is dropping at very high or very low duty cycle depending on the topology. The question is why? In this presentation, I'm not going to do any calculation of currents and voltages and overlapping, but really look at the general picture in an intuitive way to explain this phenomena of effect of duty cycle on the efficiency. I will show that the losses are in fact independent on the duty cycle. That is, the losses are not dependent on duty cycle, but the efficiency is. Okay, so let's have a look first of all, what are the causes for losses. I'm talking about the MOSFET losses, not the core or other losses. We have first of all, of course, conduction losses due to the RDS on of the transistor or MOSFET. And the power dissipation will be proportional to the current or I square, the RMS current passing through this transistor. And then we have the switching losses, which are due to the fact that we have an overlap between the drop of the voltage, say, in the turn off, and the rise of the current. There is an overlap here, which of course means energy dissipation and times the frequency it will be power. So the power will be proportional to the voltage across the device and the current through it. And this will be the power dissipation due to the switching losses. I'm showing here a synchronous buck, and what I'm going to stress is that the switching losses are really happening at a certain instance within the switching cycle. So I'm starting with the upper transistor conducting, and then when it turns off, then the current will sort of swing between here and the lower branch, and this transition is what I call the pseudo zero voltage switching because I can turn the current very quickly, and this is what usually I'm doing, turning off quickly the current, and if the, there is a delay due to capacitances, parasitic capacitances, of, there is a delay in the rise of the voltage, then the overlap is minimum. So this is not a big issue of switching losses. And then the current will be passing through the diode, is okay and then I'll turn on the lower transistor at actually zero voltage switching because there's only the voltage drop on the dial and then when I turn off this transistor it's turned off at zero voltage switching too and now comes the switching losses when I turn on this transistor not only that there is a maximum voltage on this transistor there is also a diode which is contacting this way and then I am putting a voltage on it so I have the reverse recovering problem. So th this is when we have hard switching and then this is the major cause of switching loss. So what happens if I don't have a transistor, I just have a diode? Well, it's the same thing except that the conduction losses will be actually larger, again depending on the current. And the switching losses may be a little bit lower because if this is a short key diode or this is a short key diode, in the case of this is a buck, this is a boost. Uh, if this is a short key diode, then of course the reverse recovery is less of a problem. But other than that, it's the same situation. Now let's have a look now at this configuration, this topology. This could be either a buck or a boost, depending on which direction the current flows this way, if this is the input, this is the output, it's a buck. If this is the input, this is the output, and the current goes this way, it's a boost. From the point of view of the transistor, it's the same thing. There's no difference. Now, suppose I have a certain voltage on the transistor and a certain current in the inductor, okay? So I'm assuming a certain current and a certain voltage. The losses, will be given as a function of this voltage and this current because the current is causing the conduction losses and switching losses and of course the voltage is involved in the switching losses. Now what about the duty cycle? 
Well, it really does not affect the losses. The losses are independent on the duty cycle. You can switch it any way you want. You always have a current passing through one transistor, either this one or this one, and just a question of the duty cycle, the distribution between them, but the losses will be the same. And then the switching losses, as I have seen, are dependent on one transistor. In this case, it will be this one. If this is, a, say, a, a buck, it will be when this one is switching. And again, it is a function of the voltage and the current and not the duty. So I think it's an interesting observation that the losses, the switching and conduction losses, are independent of the duties. We'll see later on that the efficiency is a function of the duty cycle. Now what about the buck boost? Well, again, the current of the inductor will determine the losses, its switching and conduction, but the voltage on the transistor, this particular one, is now between V1 and V2, that is the difference between them. So if I look at this voltage, at this, this voltage, and taking into account the transfer function between uh, V2 and V1, and then I come up with something which is kind of reminds us of a boost converter. Looking at it at a different angle, here is the back boost. I'm rotating it, here it is. So it's the same thing, I just put it outside like this. And then I'm changing the location of ground. I'm calling this ground and this ground. Doesn't matter, functionality is the same thing. This is kind of a strange boost. It has a negative input. Nonetheless, it's a boost converter, okay? Now, obviously, the voltage here, referred to ground, is like in a boost converter, V1 over one minus V2. So we see that in the back boost, the voltage on this uh, transistor is really like the uh, boost, depending on this difference of the voltage, which in the boost is actually the output. So we can conclude that in the back boost, the losses are proportional to this difference and, of course, the inductor current. So let's now see what about efficiency. Again, the losses are independent of duty cycle. But since the power is a function of the duty cycle, I mean given V1 and the inductor, Therefore, the efficiency will be a function of the duty cycle. So if I express V2 as D times V1, the losses are proportional to V and I, and then the output power is, of course, V2, this one, times IL. So I find that the efficiency, which is the output power over the output power plus the losses, output to input, I'm neglecting here the efficiency difference, is equal to the duty cycle divided by duty cycle plus the P loss, which is a function of V1 and IN. It, this should be V1 and IN. Divided by V1 IL. So this is a constant for this configuration. Okay? So this is a constant. So for a given V1 IL, this is a constant independent on the duty cycle. And if I look now at the plot of the efficiency, uh, which can be expressed again like this, I find that when the gain is low, this is a very low duty cycle, this is a small number, the efficiency is the lowest, approaching zero. And then we get the maximum efficiency when the duty cycle is approaching one, because when the duty cycle is one, then basically you have a transfer like this from here to here, and you have maximum power transfer, and of course then the efficiency will be the highest but the, because the losses are still the same. Now what about the boost? Well, doing the same thing, expressing V1 as a function of V2, I go through this and I find that the efficiency again is a function of the duty cycle, times V1 IL. V1 IL is the cause for the losses. So here we find that when the duty cycle is zero, 
Duty cycle approaching zero, meaning that the duration of the pulse here is very short, so most of the time this transistor is conducting, and again we have a direct transfer. This will be the highest efficiency, and then when the duty cycle is approaching one, we have the, for a given voltage and current, we have the lowest power coming out, and therefore the efficiency drop given the losses which are depending on the voltage and inductor which I assume to be constant. So what can be done? If you need high transfer ratio or low transfer ratio in the case of a, a buck, in the case of the boost we're talking about high transfer ratio when then the efficiency drops, what you need to do is either reduce V1 the voltage on the transistor or the current of the transistor. By this you can improve the efficiency because the losses are a function of V1 and the current. So here is one way of reducing V1. If I have a tapped inductor, the voltage that I see here is the midpoint, I mean it's not the mid, but it's a, at the tap here, and the voltage here is therefore lower than the output voltage, and consequently the losses will be lower. In this case, however, there is an issue with leakage inductor that one has to uh, worry about. Another way to reduce the voltage would be to use here a piggyback. I'm starting with a boost converter generating a voltage which is lower than the voltage that is required, so the stress of the transistor is lower, but then I have here a coupling to a secondary which generates more voltage, so therefore I can boost up the voltage. So again, there is some issue here with leakage, which is perhaps not that bad as in the previous case, but this is one way, again, to reduce the voltage across the transistor. Here is another way. We are generating a lower voltage and then using a switched capacitor converter or a capacitive multiplier, we get the highest voltage. And again, the objective is to reduce the voltage stress on the transistor, thereby improving the efficiency. For the buck, there are a number of ways to reduce the voltage stress, primarily by the multi-level approach. And here I'm showing the flying capacitor multi-level, in which we have a capacitor which at steady state is charged to the half of the input voltage and one can show that the voltage stress on the transistors is lower, actually it's half the bus voltage. Obviously you pay with more transistors. Now what about reducing the inductor current, because again the losses are a function of the inductor current and the voltage on the transistor, and if I have a voltage I can reduce the current by a transformer so that the current reflected from output to the input is dependent on the turns ratio and therefore the losses uh, would be low. And here is an example, this is a flyback converter. We have a high output current at the output, say the voltage here is low, so we have a high current, but due to the turns ratio, the current of the primary is lower, so I can get a lower current and lower losses as compared to using, say, a buck converter. Of course, here I'm getting also a isolation, and this is a benefit of using a transformer or a flyback, which is a coupled inductor. Now, the penalty here in this particular case is that the voltage on the transistor will be somewhat higher, or higher depending on the turns ratio, of course, because you have a reflection of the output voltage to the primary added to the input voltage, so there is a penalty here of a voltage, so the trade-off is lower current, a bit higher voltage. Another way to reduce both the voltage and the current would be to use a, say, a cascade arrangement. Again, the penalty here, we have two transistors. But the point is, as we are looking at it in this presentation, the voltage becomes lower because we are, have a stage which has a lower voltage than the required one, so therefore the voltage here will be lower. Obviously this means a different, more comfortable 
duty cycle. And then we have a second section from a higher voltage to the desired one with a lower duty cycle. But the point is that the voltage here is higher, but the current here will be lower because we are starting with a higher voltage. So the current here is going to be lower than the current here. So consequently, we have a case in which we both reduce the voltage on the, this transistor with the same current as we would have with the regular boost. And at this stage, we have the, the same voltage as we would have on a regular boost, but with a lower current. So the losses here will be lower here due to the lower current and here due to the lower voltage. Obviously, this translates into duty cycle corresponding to the required output voltage as a function of the input voltage. And here's the relationship of the voltages and the current that we can obtain here. There is another variation, which is using one transistor, the same idea, we generate an intermediate voltage, and then we have another boost converter to generate the output voltage. These are separated by this diode, so this transistor will pull here this inductor to ground as well as this inductor to ground. And therefore, the operation is very, very similar to what we have here. Now, what about the losses and efficiency in this case? Well, I'm leaving it to you as an exercise. So this brings me to the conclusions. You can say that PWM converted losses are a function of the switch voltages and the inductor current. The efficiency, though, is a function of the duty cycle because the output power is changing while the losses are constant, and I'm talking about a constant voltage and a constant inductor current. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.